That peak, which was Force Awakens, that's now gone. Star Wars is finished, man. It's finished. So let's let's talk about these announcements that they've made, and I'll and I'll save the best for last. So Dave Filoni, a film set in the New Republic, closing out the Mandalorian and and, and so forth. Okay, and so forth. But the thing with Dave Filoni is that Dave Filoni he is he's a Star Wars fanboy. Dave Filoni isn't a Spielberg. He isn't a Lucas. In Star Wars, Lucas only wants. A New Hope is an amazing film. Watch THX. People always know him about Star Wars. Go and watch THX, which was, I think, a film he did. I think he did that before Star Wars. Was it the before Star Wars? But go watch THX with Robert Duval. Lucas was, was, it, was a damn good filmmaker. So, you're so Lucas and Spielberg, Coppola, they came from that kind of um, filmmaking renaissance of the, of the 70s. Dave Fallon is a fanboy. He ain't a filmmaker. So even He's not even an iota. Or the filmmaking quality that peak Lucas was. He isn't. So he making his a, a film and so forth. Fine and so forth. But look, the guy is just in Lucas' stooge. Cool. Plot to one side. James Mangold. A film set at the dawn of the Jedi. All right. Now, here's the thing about James Mangold. Has James Mangold ever made an amazing film? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, what about that Wolverine film? Was that film really an outstanding, amazing film? No. His best film is Copland. Go watch Copland. Starring um, Stallone, um, Javi Keitel, and Robert De Niro. Great film. But the film isn't great because of the script of the director. The film is great because of the outstanding performances from Stallone, Javi Keitel, Robert Patrick, um, and uh, what's it called, Robert De Niro. It's really about the, the performances. So this man, Gold Dude, again, okay, he's definitely a far better filmmaker than Dave Filoni. But he ain't no Peak Lucas, he ain't no Spielberg, yo. And I just watched the Indiana Jones trailer. I'm like, okay, all right, okay. I mean, is, is this the best you can do? And also, The Dawn of the Jedi. All right, okay. Like, does that really excite anyone? Does it really excite anyone? I don't know. We'll put that to one side. I say I saved the best for last. Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy is going to direct a film set after the rise of Skywalker with Daisy Ridley back as Rey. So basically, it's going to be um, about her establishing the new Jedi Order. Do you know what, do you know what was trending? Do you know how I actually found out about the Star Wars talk? It wasn't actually because Star Wars was trending. Do you know what was trending? John Boyega was trending. Because they were like, so he's not been forgotten. Who is signing up to watch another Star Wars film starring freaking Daisy Ridley as Rey. Who the hell is standing up for that? But guys, it, it gets better. I did some, some research. So, Charmaine Obad Chichinoy, this is from his her background, is a Canadian journalist, filmmaker, and activist known for her work in films that highlights the inequality for women. Now, there is nothing wrong with Fighting for the inequality of women. I have a sister, I've got a mother, I've got aunts, I've got several um, female cousins that I love re more than anything, and so forth. So, 100%, I, if, if there's any inequality for women, I'm going to fight for it because I've got one woman in my family that's feel the effects of that. So, 100%. But, guys, connect the dots. So, do you really feel this is just going to be just a regular film and will just stand on the merits of its um, aesthetic qualities? No. Because the fact that it's starring Daisy Ridley at the head, this is going to be yet another agenda-driven film. And guys, don't get it twisted. This isn't about being woke and so forth. Please, please, please don't mistake woke and agenda-driven Walk is something about being alert, being awake, and being aware of the ignorance of society. Okay? Agenda-driven is when you have a particular agenda in mind, and you are forcing it in places it doesn't need to, to be. You should not force... Bro, of course I fight for racism, and I feel very strongly about racism. I don't want to racism in bloody Star Wars. I don't want racism in freaking Batman. I don't want racism in freaking Transformers or Ninja Turtles. No, I don't want racism in, in these kinds of franchises. No. 
So this whole thing of like, you know, gender equality and so forth, I don't that shouldn't be in Star Wars, but guys, you know how the game is gonna go. You know how it's gonna go down. And again, I mean credit to her and so forth with Sharmin and so forth. You're going from Lucas to Charmaine and Dave Filoni and Mangold? Star Wars is finished. It will still make money. Based on just how incredible the franchise was, based on just how incredible what George Lucas is, it will always make money because that core fan base will buy anything Star Wars. But that core is slowly and slowly shrinking. Bro, like my older brothers are crazy Star Wars. I know Star Wars because of my older brothers who were crazy Star Wars fans. They've left now. They're now gone. And there are more and more and more Star Wars fans going to go. It will never fully go. Because there will always be that core that will buy and consume anything Star Wars and fight for anything Star Wars. Because these are the guys who loved all the prequels, all the sequels, I just love everything Star Wars. But that number of people who are like, it ain't this anymore. Guys, man, bro, I watched the two seasons of Mandalorian. First season quality, second season I was like, okay, what's happening? I haven't even watched the first episode of Mandalorian. I'll be watching the Angry Joe show and looking at his reviews for the Mandalorian. I'm like, oh my god. Perfect. Perf perfect. So, and I knew it was going to go there because guess who is now centered around? Bo Katan, the female Mandalorian. Who runs Star Wars now? Kathleen Kennedy. What was the shirt that she was wearing, I think, some years ago? The, the, the Force is female. It's, it's been hijacked. It's been hijacked. And my thing is that, of course, you should have a Star Wars with men, women, things, and so forth. But the art should always come first. And art should be completely separate from any agenda you have within the real world. Because the real world stuff, that is where we have, that's, that's for the UN. That's for political discourse and so forth. But when we now come to predator, heat, all these kinds of stuff, this it's freaking movies. So therefore it should be solely about the arts. And... Where was this whole idea that, you know, women were sort of put down? Bro, do you know how amazing Leia was? Leia was an amazing character in the first three Star Wars films. Oh, no, she was always... She, was a, she wasn't a damsel in distress. Leia was freaking ordering around Luke and Han and so forth, okay? She, so she was an amazing character. But we've now gone from that to where you now have this overpower. So you want me to watch a film starring Rey who achieved what? Did what? How did she suffer? How did she, she grow? She was lubricating... Bro, she lubricated the villain in the first freaking film. Why? Because you want to make everyone know that women are not weak. Women don't need no man. Women don't need, need to be suffering and should not be shown to be in any kind of compromised situation. Let's just show women that's at, at being strong. It's been hijacked. It's been hijacked. It's been hijacked. And if you say anything in opposition, you are a sexist or you just don't like women, or you're just a hater. So it is what it is. But guys, look at this. Because <laughs> I, I just laugh. Because I laugh because I, cause, cause I, cause I want Star Wars to suffer based on what they did to John Boyega, based on what they did to him and how they screwed him over with that coonish, trash, offensive character that was out bomb known as Finn. I told you, I, I bought the, the toy of Finn. After what I saw they did to him in the first film and the second film, I threw it away. I threw that. I threw that. I threw the. I threw it in, in, in the bin. So Star Wars is finished, but they'll keep going. They'll keep going. But look at the Mandalorian TV figures. It's going down. It doesn't hit the same. Interest in Star Wars is winning. So the only people who will be truly into Star Wars are the hardcore fans. But the general populace and so forth, eh? And once the next, because I don't know what the next big thing is. It could be DC. If James Gunn gets DC right, DC could not take over what Marvel is doing. Who knows what's going to happen with Dune 2? But who knows what the new big thing is? But Star Wars, in terms of reaching that general populace, is over. Like, that peak, which was Force Awakens, that's now gone. So now, for the general populace, they're like, there's no Luke, there's no Han, there's nothing for me to connect to, and you've not done enough to really make people care about something that is new. Finito.